channel. Um, I hope everyone's having a great 2021 so far. Um, so today's video I wanted to, the idea actually came to me last night. Um, it's to do with confidence out hacking by yourself. So I actually hack Ruby a lot, well at least once or twice a week during the winter. Um, usually on the weekend when there's light and then in the summertime we'd hack more um, and if I have time off work we'll, we'll go out and hack. I always hack by myself, I very rarely go out with other people um, and it's just because Ruby kind of gets a bit antsy with other horses and to be honest I actually prefer kind of hacking by myself like I, like I love chatting to people at the yard and I love kind of you know I love socialising at the yard but I kind of because Ruby gets antsy with other horses um, and because I kind of to manage kind of my own sort of nervousness about being out, out on Ruby and how spooky she is and stuff and stuff I kind of like to just be able to do what I want to do um, as opposed to kind of having to bend to other people or do what they're doing or people kind of trying to pressure you into things that you don't want to do and stuff or or else just to kind of even if they're not doing that just but just kind of like the the kind of you kind of feel bad if you're feeling like they want to do something and you don't so I just would rather just hack by myself and chat to people at the yard when we're back um but yeah um but just basically I like I know it can be kind of daunting to go out by yourself um and I know yeah like obviously there is a kind of safety concern um but I just kind of want to give tips sort of for my tips and I bear please bear in mind I'm not like a sports psychologist or a counsellor or like anything to do with kind of you know any kind of medical field or I don't even have it again I'm not even like a qualified equest like equestrian person um but this is just my kind of tips as a sort of nervous hacker um to build confidence and yeah and, and have enjoyable rides outside by yourself with your horse so my first one is obviously probably going to be the most obvious but have the right gear so um yeah I honestly I I think it's just I personally think it's absolutely crazy to get on a horse without a hat on um like I just I anything could happen they're you know they're flight animals even you could have the most like bomb proof good natured horse ever and something just could have an odd day could stumble like anything and since you've only got one head I just honestly I just I can't I just can't understand why you wouldn't wear a hat um, they're so comfy, you can get ones with ventilation, you can get ones that are properly fitted to your head. So they're, some of them are really stylish, they can match your outfits. I just, I don't know, I just, yeah, wear a hat. Especially out hacking, um, whatever, even, even whatever out of the arena, I still don't even really understand that, but um, like out hacking where the ground is different, you could fall and land on a rock or like just anything could happen. So just, yeah, wear a hat, you've only got one head. Um, and then uh, if, if it helps and you feel more confident, a uh, back protector. Now I'm going to admit I don't wear my back protector all the time because I feel quite restricted by it. I think I need to invest in a new one. Um, but yeah, if again, if it's going to like, I, I, I think it probably is better to have the back protector on than not. Well, it definitely is better. Not, not think, it definitely is. Um, so yeah, I would have the back protector on as well. I, I will get a new one that actually is a bit more comfortable and less restrictive. Um, but yeah, but the hat is like non-negotiable, like you need a hat. Um, so the second tip is to tell someone when you're going, where you're going and when you expect to be back. So I always do this, to be honest, I do this even when I'm riding in the arena. So I'll often go up late in the evening after work and no one else will be at the yard. So I will always tack up, get ready. And just as I'm about to mount and get on up, I'll text my sister and say, going riding now, if you're not here for me by like nine or half nine when you call the yard owner. Um, just, yeah, it's just like an extra kind of safety measure because I mean, God forbid if something did happen and you know, you're not in a position to be able to ask for, reach for out for help or get your phone out or, you know, then you don't want to be just kind of lying there for hours waiting until someone finds you. Like <laughs> you, you want someone to kind of be known that you're going riding and this is when they can expect to hear from you. And so I would always tell someone when you're going, where you're going and when you expect to be back and just send them a text. Make sure you, now do please do make sure you remember to send them the text to say you're back because I have done that in the past where <laughs> I've gotten off and forgotten and my sister's been like, are you alive? Um, but yeah, 
definitely make sure you send that's definitely like a good a good thing to do um just to ensure that you're safe and also like kind of when you know that someone will call for help if if god forbid anything terrible happened you you'll, you'll just feel more confident you'll be like okay if i if, even if the worst thing happens like help will come <laughs> um so yeah that would be number two now number three is for when you're actually on ad writing and it is to talk 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 i literally get on ruby and i as soon as we go out i just babble to her i like babble it's i say if you were to say if you were to have a shot every time i say good girl like you'd have alcohol poisoning after like two seconds or two minutes like you would just it's just yeah i constantly talking to ruby out hacking um, a lot of it's good girl. Sometimes I'll be like, oh, look at the birds. I sound demented, like I really do. I've, if anyone was to record me, I would sound absolutely nuts, but it actually helps me. I think it because, well, first of all, it helps her because she's like, okay, she's talking away to me. There's obviously nothing to be worried about. She's talking away and she's happy and chilled and chatty and they pick up on things. But then also because you're talking, you have to breathe, which, I find when you don't talk, it's very easy to kind of get tense and be like, oh God, her ears twitch there. Is she going to speak at this? And then just get tense and the tension builds up. Whereas when you talk, you're obviously taking in air and expelling air. So just, yeah, just keep talking, keep chatting. It will help you relax and um, smile. Say good girl, good, or good boy, if you have a gelding. Um, yeah, so just, just keep talking. It will help you relax. Um, and then the my fourth tip is to I if you so okay if you're riding with a contact which I would recommend you do if you're out hacking I um, I do know some people kind of ride on the buckle or whatever but it depends on what you're doing but if you just say you're kind of your horse tends to be a bit tense or spooky out hacking so if you're riding with a contact what I do is like when I can feel that Ruby is very very tense um, and this is just what I do maybe it won't work for your horses maybe they won't get it I. I don't know these are only my tips but um i so i ride with the contact every like i'll literally count the strides and i'll go like okay one two three of oh, steps of walk and then i'll release so i'll bring my hands forward and then i'll like, do my do like five strides and then i'll like release and say good girl and like this really kind of i think it gives her something to focus on and kind of takes her attention off her surroundings and she's like because she's kind of like waiting for the release then um and yeah it just kind of um, I, I think it just focuses her focuses her a little bit more like again another key when you're out hacking is especially if you've got 10 spooky horses to just keep them focused and engaged because if you let their mind wander then all of a sudden it just goes to what's in the what's in the bush that could eat me or whatever so yeah um i would just yeah that's what i do it's kind of like little micro releases and then i'll do them um I'll do them like I'm very like I'll vary the amounts so it'll be kind of like an intermittent reinforcement schedule so um yeah like we'll do like three three walk strides and then we'll you know I'll give her a release and then we'll do five and then we'll do three again and then we'll do seven and then like you know just so she doesn't know when to expect it and again it keeps her engaged um so that's one of my tips for walking my fifth tip is if you're kind of struggling with the talking tip because I like I, I do know when I first started I, I did used to struggle with it Um, I just felt like I was I don't know do you know when you just feel nuts and you just don't want to do something because it just makes you feel a bit like crazy so I, my fifth tip if you struggle with the talking or if you just run out of things to say or you know your, your voice is going hoarse um, is to stick on a podcast so if you have your phone oh another tip is to either have a bum bag that you can fit your keys um, your your phone in and your phone in or like have wear riding tights or jods with a, like a, a pocket that you can have your phone in um so yeah my fifth tip i think it, i think it's number five will be to um listen to a podcast so if you listen to a podcast um just like someone chatting someone talking again just something to relax you and maybe home at the same time or just kind of just sort of do things that will help you relax so or take your mind off hacking but obviously like obviously be aware of what you're doing and where you're going and maybe keep up with the releases and stuff but just something and um, something kind of relaxing maybe maybe it could even be soft music something that you're 
something that will relax your horse or relax you by listening to it and kind of distract you from kind of maybe your own nervousness. Um, and then my sixth tip is to visualize. So, or it's kind of like visualization. So basically before you leave to go to the yard and you know you're gonna hack it, maybe you woke up and it's a nice day, I would just kind of picture the route you're gonna do, take in, you, in your head, picture where you're gonna get on, picture, you know, walking out to the gate, picture where you're gonna trot, where you're gonna walk, um, you know, if there's a spot that like, like for instance, I know Ruby, her absolute nightmare is gaps and hedges, which is strange, but yeah, that's just, she's just terrified of gaps and hedges. Um, so like I know like anywhere there's a gap in a hedge I know like okay I'll like have to kind of you know talk to her a bit more or maybe I'll like little ask for a little side pass or a little leg yield just to kind of distract her maybe do a few zigzags um, and yeah so I will like visualize where I'm going and um, where I'm going to ask for a trot where I'm going to ask for a walk how we're like you know where the canter spots we're going to pick Um obviously you know, your ride probably will not trans like go 100% how you envisioned it uh, when you actually do it. But just having that visualization and being like, like it's, all, it's almost like you've already done the ride in your head. So there's nothing to be nervous of. Um, so yeah, that's just another tip for kind of building confidence. And um, there's a lot, I'm sure if you kind of YouTube kind of visualization techniques and stuff like there, a lot will come up, but it is a very useful tool to kind of build confidence and manage your, uh, manage your anxiety or nervousness about going out by yourself. Um, and then my last tip is to maybe pick a circular route. So if you have this available to you, um, to pick like kind of a route that, yeah, like a route that you kind of, it's a circle and maybe maybe stick to the same route for a while until you build confidence up or until you start to get kind of bored. Um, and then maybe you venture on to new routes. And obviously like, just when you come in from a hack, don't don't focus on the kind of you know the tree that your horse spooked at for you know and you couldn't get them past for two minutes kind of focus on the winds like did you get did you go through a big puddle that they usually would have had a figari at you know did uh did you have a canter in a spot that's different to where you usually have a canter did you have 10 minutes of uninterrupted riding with no spooks just kind of focus on the positives and just keep building on that don't like literally let the negatives go as soon as they happen just be like okay that's gone that's that happened but it's, it's over now and we're moving on and we're going to focus on the positives look at all the positives because i guarantee there's way more positives from every ride than there are negatives so yeah they're my tips i think there's seven in total so um let me know if any if you are going to try them out um hopefully i'm hopefully coming into the spring well, i know it's still january we've still got a bit to go but yeah hopefully when it, as soon as the days get lighter be more hacking and uh, yeah, I just think there are some nice tips to help you with your hacking in 2021. So let me know if you find any of them useful and I'll chat to you in my next video. Bye.